Hi, dear attendees of the Airflow Summit 2021. My name is Camilo Fandino. I work as a senior analytics engineer at Third Republic, and I started my journey with Airflow back in 2017. I'm a Latino man in my early 30s with dark brown hair, wearing a white shirt, and I'm sitting in front of my desktop with a white wall behind me. I'm at my home in Berlin, in Germany. I'm supporting the initiative of the organizers of the Airflow Summit 2021 in making an effort to make this event more inclusive and easily accessible to all audiences. Thank you very much for joining. Um, I'm very excited and grateful to have the opportunity to participate this year with a lightning talk. Airflow and analytics engineers, do's and don'ts. Since the last year, I've seen the community growing immensely and with it, the adoption of Airflow in many other business environments. Airflow 2.0 was released last December in 2020, and the current version is now the 2.1.1. The community is doing better than ever before, and I'm happy to contribute today with my talk. Why am I here? Well, when I was doing my research to consolidate the information for this talk, and that I'm sharing in this moment with all of you, I wondered if there were any other speaker that had the role or the title uh, of an analytics engineer. I then went to the speaker's page of the Airflow Summit and scrolled down from the top to the bottom and between pretty faces, amazing titles and many company names, I could not find an analytics engineer work anywhere. I asked myself, what am I doing here? Perhaps I must be in the ground conference. I tried then searching the page with common F and well, I just had one result. That was under my name. And I think that just justifies by itself the reason of having this talk within all the amazing content that is being broadcast in the Airflow Summit 2021. Starting with this question, what does an analytics engineer do then? Well, analytics engineers haven't been that long on the radar compared to data engineers or data scientists. It is always hard to tell who and when was the first time that the job title came up. Nevertheless, I found this interesting paragraph that I found inside the DVT webpage. This job is neither data engineering nor analysis. It's somewhere in the middle and it needed a new title. Starting in 2018, we, DVT, and a few of our friends in the locally optimistic community started calling this role the analytics engineer. And also they describe it this way. Analytics engineers provide clean data sets to end users modeling data in a way that empowers end users to answer their own questions. While a data analyst spends their time analyzing data, an analytics engineer spends their time transforming, testing, deploying, and documenting data. Okay, at this point, explaining briefly the role, but nothing about Airflow. So why then Airflow? Sometimes it's difficult to tell exactly the scope of any data role and which tools they must be involved with. And I would say it's better that way. Modern data teams tend to be cross-functional because of people having different professional backgrounds. Therefore, the task of analytics engineer may differ depending on the size of the company, the amount of data engineers of data scientists available, and also the business requirements. It could be, for example, that analytics engineers may have implemented by themselves airflow across the organization, or they just got it running from a data engineer's hands. As I say, this may differ depending from the team size. The analytics engineer's ultimate interest is to be able to create a data pipeline that is continuously providing data for consumption, either consumed by a data scientist, a report, or to keep alive a dashboard. To finally answer then, Airflow is the analytics engineer's ally in any organization, as it allows to orchestrate the integration of external data sources by using different operators from different providers. The transformation of data using, for example, DVT, it can also have you monitor and alert the status of your data pipelines using notifications uh, through Slack operators. And yeah, many other possibilities that you have uh, with the providers and with the different operators. So speaking from my experience and considering myself another basic Airflow user, I want to share with you the do's and don'ts I've learned in my time working with Airflow and boost your day-to-day -day work and increase the impact across an organization using Airflow. So whether you are studying with Airflow or already have been using it for years, you may find something useful here. Let's start. Uh, this is something I sometimes forget when I see myself blog, but use the community Slack channel. It's one of the best resources to find answers to those questions that have not an answer on the web yet. 
the best part, those questions are being answered from people that went through the same problem as you. And really often the issues and questions are being answered from the hands of the commuters. I usually find helpful answers within 12 hours. That's super fast. Have your own local airflow environment. I, for, I, for, I fortunately did this since the very beginning. Whether in a Docker container or installed on the local system, having the possibility to play around with operator hooks, the newest version, or just test other airflow concepts will help you to become familiar for when you need to work in a provided development environment without messing around your dev work or your current work branches. Define together with your team best practice for writing tasks. You could create a template, for example, showing name conventions and the way you establish dependencies between tasks. That, combined with a linter, will have to contribute to the quality of your code and also their readability. For example, I always use a dummy operator at the end of all my DAGs with a simple finish task. This allows me, among other things, to easily build dependencies between DAGs and also to make sure tasks are converging to a single end. It's just the way I do it. I always include notifications in your DAGs. Having notifications such as an uh, email on failure or on failure callback in your DAG arguments or adding also Slack operator tags will have you monitor your pipelines when something goes wrong or just to let your team know that there is fresh data now available. This is also really, really important. Share what you know about Airflow with your team. Whether you are an expert or just did your first steps, try sharing your knowledge in your team. This, this could enable others to deploy their own data pylons in the future, reducing bottlenecks in data projects. And it's easy. You just make sure to review their PRs. You can give them a feedback. And then you just put the code into production. Well, this requires a bit of effort to do, but it's really important. Ensure that a fail-safe CI-CD is in place. And I'm telling you to do it yourself. You can collaborate with the data engineers or with the SREs to achieve a CI-CD that allows you to test your DAGs before they get into product, a production environment. And here we have the dots. Starting with, do not ignore the folder structure. Keeping the folder structured as it is and building your custom code on top or with the guidelines will not just help you to maintain the guidelines of the project, but also will allow you then, when you're ready, to contribute with your code to the project. Then you can become a committer. Sorry. Do not put tokens, password, or any sensitive data in plain text. I think I was doing this at the very beginning with Slack tokens, if I'm not wrong. but not only are you compromising the security of your system, but you also increase the risk of a data leakage. One of the many ways you have is, for example, using the connections feature that encrypts that sensible data and you can access it later to a connection hook. Do not put top level statements inside your DAX. At least try to don't, to don't put many. What I mean with this is like, um, there are two things. For example, the first, you want to run an SQL query from a big query operator. And instead of putting all that SQL inside the operator or inside the code of your DAC, you just put a path indicating the SQL file where your query is stored. And that will help you maintain your keep uh, or to keep your, your DAC super clean. Other thing I learned a few weeks ago while I was having the definition of a connection inside of one of my DAX code uh, was like one of my colleagues then approached me and, and made me aware that the connection was being executed repeatedly with no sense. What happened is that Airflow is running constantly your DAX folder and it can be that after some time you can start to see a decrease of performance in, and if this is happening with hundreds of DAX all the time and since it needs to execute more and more code in every scheduler had it the the performance really will decrease. For this case, I just modify the hook of my connection and put my parameters inside, and in that way, the connection is just executed when my task need when my task needed. So, do not write the same DAG hundred of times. If your team needs to create similar DAGs hundred of times, avoid copy pasting. This does not follow the repeat yourself principle. They don't repeat yourself principle. Instead of it, uh, with the help of the data engineers, try to find a solution for generating dynamically DAX, for example, with the help of JSON files or even variables. Do not over-engineer your data pilots. 
If all you want to do is to run a few tasks daily inside a DAC and you are just starting with airflow and all the body matters is to get the job done, there are no airflow best practices agents that will come and find you because of what you did. This applies mostly to really small teams where the role of the data is not yet crucial for the organization. I'm sure when the time for it comes, you will be prepared to do it this way. Well, it was indeed a lighting talk. Uh, my time is over, so thank you very much for joining my session. I really hope the experience I have done so far with Airflow can contribute to your day-to-day -day work in a data-driven organization. If you would like to give me a feedback, discuss about my talk, or ask me any question, just feel free to do it. Add me to your LinkedIn network, add me in Slack. Uh, if you want to work with me and my team, I'm happy to announce that we are a trade republic the Europe's leading new broker are hiring not just for analytics engineer roles, but also for many other data roles. Make sure you check out our open roles in the traderepublic.com slash careers. And see you next time and enjoy the rest of the Airflow Summit. Bye.